Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with today. It's another edition of the uh, Monday Theo Night video uh, for, uh, what is it, September 26, 2022. Uh, title today's session is uh, Mark at a Pivotal Level as the Currency Crisis Deepens. Uh, the pivotal level, what is that? It's around 3,600. Going back to June lows, um, it was June 13th. We probably put in the more sig most significant uh, uh, price level in terms of volatility, um, in terms of, uh, of uh, advanced decline. I mean, it was a real indication the market may be starting to find support. It was also aligning with a lot of seasonality that, that kind of we have a typically bullish time of year. Well, we're back at the same level. And uh, the conditions are not so bullish right now. Um, now, certainly volatility markets might be signaling. We might be nearing a short-term level of support. There's option activity today that we'll talk about that's certainly aligning with maybe a uh, the dollar's a bit overbought. We may come in and we may have a chance to lift here. But if you're expecting to see the same type of rally we saw in June, July, and August, uh, think again. I mean, ultimately, this is a very, very difficult part of the market uh, position for the market to be in. And any rally we probably see is probably going to accompany a more significant sell-off as the interest rate outlook really hasn't changed at all. In fact, it's gotten even maybe slightly more um, draconian, I guess you could say. So if we look at uh, the Fed funds futures, we'll look at it for uh, second September. Uh, the current projections were at three to three and a quarter percent. We're, we're currently projecting what three and three quarters to four percent, 70 percent probability. And if we look at it here against, uh, you know, a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, um, nothing has really changed from the Fed statement last week. We've ramped up our expectations for a tighter monetary policy and higher rates. You look at December, we're looking at four and a quarter to four and a half percent. So what is that? That's another 50 basis points, right? 67 percent. We did back off from the highs of today's session, but again, notice that we're still amplifying the expectations in terms of Fed rate hikes going into the end of the year. And we really don't see, even if we come out here to, for example, July of next year, by middle of next year, do we see the Fed bat backing off or does the market expect the Fed to back off? And if you look right here, you'll notice again that, you know, at the moment, four to four and a half to four and three quarters percent, 47 percent probability. It was 40 percent a day ago, 26 percent and zero percent a month ago. So. Um, what we're seeing is that the Fed is expected to increase rates um, at a much faster rate than was expected a month ago. Conditions have changed. Previously, um, we were looking at, and maybe in May, the idea that we might be pivoting in terms of the Fed funds rate. The Fed might be cutting rates by maybe by early next year. That's completely been priced out. The conditions for the June rally are not there presently, other than the fact we are a bit oversold. Um, so as we take a look at the volatility markets, we look at the VIX number one. VIX traded near the high of the session. We are approaching this kind of 35, you know, 37 level that we've tested over the last year. Um, those are, again, you know, you can look at historical support and resistance points to give you a sense of where the VIX may pivot. Another approach is to look at, you know, back to front month volatility or the forward premium. Um, which you'll notice right now, which was similar to the end of April or uh, late February or, or late January or late, you know, late November of last year, is that currently the three-month VIX is lower than the 30-day VIX. Uh, another way to look at this is going to the product depth here and looking at the VX futures, taking a look at these two contracts. Number one, notice we're in backwardation with falling, uh, falling VIX levels. But just take the two average, you know, take the two and average amount here, 31, 30, we'll just say 30 and a half, right? 30 and a half, how does that compare to the current spot VIX? Uh, again, you know, 31, 30 and a half compared to 32. So the VIX right now is pricing higher than the VIX futures. Um, that doesn't guarantee the market's going to bottom here. But when you get to this point, unless we hit some sort of like major sell off, like again, like uh, COVID or you know, 2011, 2018, 2010, um, these are generally good points where the market does typically find a little bit of support. If you look at the VVIX, the VVIX is touching off at 110, which was its low point for a long time, but it kind of came down to historical levels down here like we saw prior to 2020. And so 110 level is pretty high historically, 
and generally means the market may be nearing a what? A low. Now, when we say a low, does it mean the market's going to bottom and we're, we're on our way up from here? Again, the point being no, <laughs> right? We might just be see a little bit of an oversold bounce. Now, there was some ac option activity today that did support this kind of thesis that, you know, the dollar being really, really high, and we'll talk about that here in a second, um, does it start to back off the highs just a little bit? If the dollar backs off the highs, this is, you know, UUP, this tracks the dollar index. It's 57% weighted to the euro, um, but gold is more of a direct relationship to the dollar. Gold was down 1% today. Is there a possibility the dollar in real terms starts to weaken a little bit after a significant strength it's exhibited since the highs back here in mid mid August? Do we start to see the dollar pull back a little bit? Well, that would help support the market and maybe stage a short term rally. Now, if we look at GLD today, there was some option activity. Um, this was for a seven seven October expiration, and it's out of the money out here at the 158.50 mostly bought. So you look at the 158.50 level, it's kind of up around this these prior lows. Um, is there a chance that we could see, you know, a little bit of a rally towards, uh, you know, these highs again? Yeah. And that's certainly a reasonable level. I, I would not expect to see a much, much higher price in gold only because the stage is not set for a major gold rally until the Fed really starts to cut rates and we start to resume that kind of reflation uh, type trade. So again, right now we're probably looking at, could we get a one third to one half retracement? That's probably about all you would expect off of an oversold rally, but you need a trigger. You probably want to see it trading through today's high. Uh, but again, there's some bullish activity stepping in today. And on the dollar side, UUP, it was bearishly oriented. Um, so if you look at the uh, 30 oct expiration out here, um, sorry, not 30 oct, oct 30 rather. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right there, mostly about the 30 strikes. So again, not super far out of the money, right? 30 bucks is right here. Um, expect maybe a near-term pullback. You know, we look at kind of a retracement here. What's our one-third? It's around 30 to about 29 and a half. That might be a reasonable short-term projection. But again, that assumes we start to see a reversal in the coming days. So look at today's low as maybe a trigger uh, for that kind of trade coming back in. Or, you know, sometimes there's an opportunity for those oversold, you know, when you're down a lot, you know, Don has his expected move, study is uh, auto expected move. You know, sometimes you get these um, oversold positions. So tomorrow we start to sell off below this. This can create the opportunity for an in out spread, which as of right now, I mean, we could look at uh, going out to 28 oct, you know, 32, you can go 25 there if you want a bit. Um, the vol skew is in, not super favorable, but it's not terrible. Um, but uh, it's pretty flattish right here, um, 152. But anyway, you could look at that kind of buying the 151, selling the 152, maybe buying the 152, selling the 153, just depending on where the price finishes um, if we start to finish below the expected move down here tomorrow. So we'll start a pressure, prices go down. There could be an opportunity for a little bit of short-term reversal in gold and the dollar. Now we talk about the currency crisis, man, it just continues to increase. So, for example, the Great British Pound against the U.S. dollar uh, sinking into the abyss today. You know, it's a real tough thing. So they have a new government in, um, you know, conservative, whatever that means. And we've kind of really just, you know, <laughs> watered down, I think, the idea of conservative. But the idea is that what have we done? You know, they're basically looking at increasing spending and lowering taxes. And you get this concept, this Laffer curve, that if you, you know, if you cut, if you, uh, um, you know, lower taxes, that somehow that you're going to bring more revenue in. But right now we have a situation where if you're expanding deficit spending into multi-year highs and yields, um, I, I'm not sure many of these indebted governments can really withstand that. And so you look at TNX today pushing almost towards 4%. What's the terminal rate going to be? Close to maybe 4, 45 4.6%. It's current expectation. You know, treasuries may continue to sell off. And the fact of the matter is, we look at the dollar yen, for example, it's very problematic because, you know, they're looking to defend 145. What does it mean? And it means they sell dollars and buy yen. Where do they get dollars from? They may have to sell treasuries to convert to dollars to then buy yen to help support their currency and trying to drive this down relative to the dollar. Um, this is, this again, this is very unusual, the sell-off we've seen in the yen. Normally, with all the weakness in the market, 
you should have seen it go this way and the reverse of the carry trade. But right now we're finding, you know, just really unique environments uh, for 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 uh, governments to operate in because of the supply issues brought about in part by by COVID and, and decades of just poor, poor policy really just coming to a head right now. And so traditional kind of methods that people have kind of done, I mean, just it's just not working, right? And and certainly, obviously, in our in our country, we're expanding deficit spending at the time that yields are exploding, and we're kind of beholden. Japan, do they sell treasuries? Does China sell treasuries and maybe propel yields higher? So we have this kind of negative feedback loop loop in the rates markets, and with the Fed expected to keep rate, keep pushing rates higher and hold it higher for longer than expected. So everyone's hoping for the pivot. The Fed wants to pivot going back to ZERP. The federal government needs it. Um, again, we're going to see deficits and borrowing start to explode in a lot, a lot of parts of the world. So the, the currency crisis that's developing right now is just a matter of that the strong dollars, because of um, the, the reserve currency status um, globally, all this debt's denominated dollars that, again, it's propelling and causing some of these currencies to break right now as the Fed is maintaining its kind of very strong, uh, you know, higher interest rate, uh, you know, tighter monetary policy. It's hard to call their monetary policies tight. They're not really doing anything there or much of anything there. They're just raising rates and squashing us, right? So anyway, so expect more volatility. So these are some of the things that are developing. They're huge, huge risk to the downside because as Treasury yields rise, what that means is it's going to cause the bond market to sell off. It's going to cause borrowing costs to go up. You look at LQD, it was down 1.74% today. HYG was down 1.18% today. We're going to continue to see pressure being, being applied to the bond market, which again, lowering earnings expectations. And not to mention just some of the issues regarding consumers. The Dallas Fed was in major contraction territory today, surprising to the downside. A lot of the data is pointing to a weaker and weaker economy, and the higher rates are only going to exacerbate that weakness. Now, Amazon seems to have found or thinks it's found the uh, the remedy here uh, to the rising inventories that the companies are holding on to, the diminished earnings outlook, and they're coming up with another prime day. <laughs> so I think it's October 11th and 12th. Is this the savior they expect it to be? Obviously, Prime Day in July worked out pretty well for them. They're trying to reinvent, the recreate the magic. Uh, companies like Walmart, they're already filling their stores with uh, with Christmas and you know, <laughs> or looking to in October, trying to push. It's like FDR during the Great Depression, moving Thanksgiving a week earlier to get people more time to spend and and uh, um, help uh, help earnings. Again, these are just these are just kind of a uh, you know smoke and mirrors just to help things. But the reality is we'll see what, what happens. But again, holiday promotions uh, are expected to hit early. Um, we'll see if the deeper discounts come late, if those early promotions don't work. So maybe holding on would not be a bad thing. But if the consumers step up and, and borrow money into this discount cycle early in October, uh, these companies may be less inclined. So you got to watch it, you know, because again, it's hard to know to time everything. Uh, but as we look at uh, the interest rate markets today, HYG, so again, this is one that's down a lot already, breaking down again today. While we may see kind of a short-term maybe move higher in the market, um, what you're seeing right now is like in, in products like HYG, you're seeing rolling going on. And a roll just means you're closing out your old position and you're putting on an, a new position. So you notice here, for example, um, uh, it's an oct to a Fed roll. So you, know, you got your, uh, it's kind of all happened at the same time, right? <laughs> but uh, let me try to find it here. It's kind of buried. 10, 10, uh, Some right current at the same time, right? 10.02.24. But you'll see the the Feb, uh, the Feb 68. There's 40,000 contracts here, 20,000, 20,000. And, uh, um, it's the October expiration here, um, yeah, 71. So, I mean, you're just seeing like we're, we're just closing some stuff out, reopening. So here's here's your roll right here from the Ox 71 to Feb. So 68. So, you know, some profit taking going on as the price is testing 671. They're rolling it down to 68. Now, obviously, this is 
in part, you're, you're taking some profits off the table, but you're maintaining the outlook. This may continue to run lower, but the profit taking helps you kind of uh, weather a short term rally in lieu of the bigger picture is still down. So you're seeing a lot of that today with with some rolling activity, even like IYR as an example. These products are pretty busy, but IYR was down over 3% earlier today. Uh, but IYR, um, this this was a roll uh, within the OX7 expiration here. But uh, yeah, we kind of, we're kind of in the money in here at the 87, 84, rolling it down and out, um, down and down rather, just to the 81, 78. Um, so again, you're, you're taking profits, but in this case, we're increasing the number of contracts traded, just keeping it on the table. And now we're kind of opening up 78 down here where last week it was 82, 83. We're, we're, we're just accentuating that downside potential movement. And IYR and real estate obviously is very, very connected to interest rates. So, so if we start to, if we continue to see pressure being born here, you're going to see movement in the bond market, you know, and other peripherals like, you know, um, like in this case, REITs. So again, everyone has an eye here to see what happens. Continued pressure is going to hurt stocks. It's going to hurt real estate as well. And it's not going to necessarily help banks. Um, so for example, KRE is done okay, but higher yields, but a flattening and inverted curve is not exactly what the banks are looking for. But these companies are still able to make a lot of money you know, particularly the member banks are able to make money on interest on reserves held at the Federal Reserve, which is the Fed raises rates. That's giving more money to them. I mean, the Fed's potentially printing or will print upwards of $600 million a day just to keep those facilities going and the reverse repo operation, which, by the way, why haven't they scaled that back from its $2.2 trillion? Um, why aren't we working on that first and then hit the interest rate side of it? Clearly, they're trying to kill demand. They're wanting to kind of push us into this recession without creating a financial crisis. But the fact of the matter is, is like if the pressures, you know, again, the, the, the risk is being borne much more so on, on, on consumers that are much more affected by higher prices and not just of goods, food and energy, but also uh, on cost of credit as well. Um, so, so again, that, that's not a great scenario there. Now on the positive side, I mean, all the news over the weekend, whether it's true or not, but uh, about Xi Jinping, on the flip side, though, there was an announcement coming from Hong Kong suggesting that they may be opening up their, their casinos. So companies like MLCO, for example, um, had, a, had a big, big move today at 25%, a good volume. We're breaking out of this kind of rectangle formation that was around five bucks to about, you know, about, you know, a buck, you know, sorry, about a uh, um, dollar fifty range. So if we start to look here, we could go maybe go eight bucks would be the projection based on the today's breakout here. Um, obviously, there's a lot of risks, but if we start to dovetail with the dollar weakness, we could see companies like Melco Resorts start to surge. Now, of course, you can't talk about uh, about uh, Hong Kong without talking about Las Vegas Sands and when uh, Las Vegas Sands back up at resistance here at about 40. We start to break through that. Again, we may have a chance of going about 45. Now, today's trade in the Las Vegas Sands... Um, it was for a, a weekly, you know, 30 step, four days left. So again, we're trying to create the gamma squeeze at that $40 level. So again, go back here, 40 bucks. We start to break above that. This creates kind of that gamma squeeze as, as market makers have to hedge their risk. You notice today, um, now most of it occurred between the market. I forgot about that. But anyway, the idea is being it can create that kind of gamma squeeze at 40 and push the price higher. Um, same thing with win. So W Y N N. Uh, nice big move here, resistance at around 70. And uh, so if we look at uh, the wins um, trade today, similar type of scenario. Again, centered on that 70 strike there. So we did kind of fade away from it today. Um, but again, mostly buying at that strike price, 9,000 contracts by the end of the day. But again, if we can break through that, that helps create that squeeze. Maybe we have a chance to push higher. So look at those levels. If we start to take them out, we might see a little bit of a squeeze higher, you know, again, maybe, you know, five, 10 bucks here and win above the 70 strike if that were to materialize. Um, also, that's helping, you know, we saw a lot of big trades last week in, in FXI and KWeb. Uh, we never really got the follow through, right? So today we finally got kind of a close above yesterday's high or Friday's high. You know, again, we didn't finish near the high of the session. These are risky bets, but again, it's just a matter of saying, you know, is there, 
Are we really oversold? Yes. If the dollar weakens, can we move higher? Sure. <laughs> so that's really what all this is about for all intents and purposes. But today is actually on a February expiration out here. Uh, 25,000 contracts at the 32 strikes. So again, um, this is coming on the heels of last week. A lot of significant activity. 32 has you up here. And that's pie in the sky stuff. The great thing about this is that if you're taking kind of short term looks at it, you know, I mean, there is some some you know, this, we got some negative skew here, but it does start to level out here at around that 31, 32 level. So if you're trying to throw out a lottery ticket, um, you know, if we just squeeze up to that 32 level. Uh, the pricing is not, you know, unfavorable to do that. You go shorter amounts of time, it starts to level off, you know, a little bit lower. Um, where, you know, again, and here you start to see it right, right there at about 29, 30. So if we get a big squeeze here, 29, 30, I and mean, that's a big, big move. It's hard to play the upside here. There's other ways, you know, you know, back spreads, that kind of thing that may price okay. But FXI and also KWeb um, today, bullish activity. Um, just looking at that, maybe oversold bounce if the dollar weakens. There's a lot of ifs in that to statement. Uh, that's where we're at right now. But the 2750 strike mostly there. So again, 2750. What do we have? You know, again, that's not a huge move, um, but it's two bucks on the on the price of the stock. You know, it could get maybe upwards of 10 percent or more. Uh, but there are very oversold levels testing support. So. A couple of different thoughts in terms of what, what you could look at at this moment at, at those kind of oversold areas there. And uh, finally, EFA. So you think about, you know, stock, you know, ETF that's down a lot. And all of a sudden you see today's trade come in, you see these rolls and you're like, man, they're keeping it on the table. And uh, in this case, rolling from a SEP expiration in here, right? Um, this is actually from the 56, 54 and moving it out and down uh, to October uh, here at the uh, the 55 and 50. There's other stuff in here too, but the idea is that again, just extending that downside, keeping the uh, keeping the risk on the table, but maybe taking a little bit off. Um, that's kind of the story today, right? Taking some profits off the table, keeping some longer expirations on in case we've continued to sell off. And uh, but certainly seeing that maybe near term, there's an opportunity for a bounce here. Again, look for maybe a trade through today's or yesterday's or Friday's high to kind of indicate that short term bounce. Um, but uh, but anyway, this is where the the in inflection point spread really comes in. Don put one on last Friday with a strangle. Um, this is a great setup for this kind of thing. If we break through, you're able to close the inflection point. We bounce up. You shut down the short put, uh, maybe add a short call if we get a little overextended enough. Um, so anyway, there, there's a there's a great setup here for the Ultima premium selling strategy. Anyway, folks, that's all we got for today. Hope you will see you back next week. Thank you.